Good morning. Here's your three by three for the last week of February as we now roll into March. So what's been going on? Of course, uh, the major buzz this week has been the coronavirus, what it's doing, uh, the impact it's having across the global economy, and certainly uh, it's impacting the energy sector. Among other things, conferences. We just saw that uh, Sierra's um, Zero Week conference in Houston has been canceled. The Energy Thought Summit in Austin for end of March has been postponed. Um, so a lot up in the air there. As far as what's going on in supply chain, surprisingly, there hasn't been that much news out last week. I actually was looking for stories this morning. They're all dated mid-February or earlier. It seems that most companies are struggling right now to assess what's actually happening on the ground. Uh, surprisingly, I was listening to Sunrun's uh, Q4 our earnings call, and they didn't even mention the impact of COVID-19, uh, neither in the main presentation or uh, in the Q&A afterwards with some of the uh, uh, investment companies. If they don't get hampered in a major way, there's some really good news coming out of uh, Sunrun in terms of solar installations and battery attachment rates. Uh, they've indicated that uh, in the Bay Area, they're selling uh, in Q4, over 50% of new solar installations had storage associated with them. Overall, uh, in California, 35%, and across all geographies, one out of five new solar cells have batteries attached. They have sold 9,000 so far, and this year they expect to nearly double those numbers. Uh, to put that in context, uh, Bloomberg New Energy Finance estimates that there will be 50,000 behind the meter storage installations in California this this year, mostly because of the PG&E outages, which impacted so many people in Northern California um, related to the wildfires. So that's one to keep watching. Um, hydrogen continues to make waves and noise. Uh, in this particular story, EDF, the French consortium, is looking at plans for production of hydrogen from the uh, fleet of UK nuclear plants, including the Hinkley C facility. So they have a consortium that's discussing linking uh, nuclear production with electrolyzers uh, to, quote, produce enough hydrogen to meet a significant portion of the forecasted demand in the UK. They want to combine this with wind energy as well. Uh, the big problem there is that Hinkley C, that nuclear plant, which is financed in part by the Chinese, is way over budget. That thing is now, the price tag has soared to as much as $28.7 billion. And they have a contract to sell power into the grid at $118 for every megawatt hour. Now, just to put that in context, the Dogger Bank wind project is going to be selling power into the grid at $48.80. And those capacity factors are north of 60% right now. So this looks to me like, yeah, good idea, but from a cost perspective, a loser right out of the box. With those kinds of prices, they're just simply not going to be competitive. Now, potentially more competitive, Shell and Gasuni unveiled plans this week for Europe's biggest green hydrogen project to date in the Netherlands with up to 10 gigawatts of North Sea offshore hydrogen, wind turned into hydrogen. They're gonna move forward um, in a project in conjunction with Gruning and Seaports with large hydrogen electrolyzers to be built in Eemshaven. The intent is to have the first three to four gigawatts of wind generating uh, creating hydrogen by 2027 with up to 10 gigawatts by 2040. So that bodes really uh, well for the hydrogen industry, Hinkley, and not so much. And then finally, uh, this is interesting. Even before the coronavirus, uh, we heard from Kia, they're going to be concentrating getting all of their EV models into Europe rather than the United States. Uh, because Europe has some pretty stringent CO2 targets that they need to meet, uh, the European countries. So we're going to be starved, potentially, for some of these electric vehicle models we'd like to see. And with the impact on supply chains, that could actually be potentially worse this year, depending really how deep those cuts are. So with Europe with these pretty firm mandates and the U.S. with pretty much nothing at all, um, we can expect to see that flow move more towards Europe than otherwise might be the case. So those are your stories for this week, uh, the last week of February, rolling into 1st of March. Everybody stay safe out there, and thank you for watching. Take care.